Stort sett opphold i indre strøk, mildere, Spitsbergen, sør-vest, liten kuling, utsatte steder, regn og regnbyger. There's plenty of fish in the North Barents Sea. The cold water of the Norwegian high Arctic is one of the world's most productive and well-managed fisheries. For Norway's economy, fish are second only to oil and gas. And we in the UK are their biggest customer. Up to 70% of the cod and haddock we eat comes from this ocean. A few miles off the Svalbard Islands, we joined a Norwegian Coast Guard vessel on fisheries patrol. You ever wondered how seriously the Norwegians take their fishing? The answer is very serious indeed. Here we go, being dropped on a winch into the Barents Sea. These teams have carried out 2,000 fisheries inspections this year. Our immersion suits are essential. You wouldn't last long without one in this polar sea just a few degrees above freezing. So we're about to board the Norwegian shrimp trawler. We've got the trawl nets out behind it. And the Coast Guard are going on board to make sure it's doing everything in accordance with the rules of the fishery. They check the fishing gear is legal and that vulnerable stocks aren't being overfished. Here, they're checking the shrimp trawl hasn't hauled up too many young Atlantic cod. So this is only polar cod, it's no problem. Right. So while most of the world's oceans have been overfished, cod, haddock and prawns from the Barents Sea are all certified as sustainable. Norway claims its rigorous policing helps keep it that way. But here's the thing, this ocean is changing. The fjords west of Svalbard used to freeze over completely in winter. Now they haven't for years. Trawlers have moved into areas once covered in polar ice. It's the same story across the Arctic. This is the average extent of sea ice in the summer. This year, it melted to its second lowest extent since satellite records began. Two million square kilometres less ice, two million square kilometres more sea. Earlier this year, Greenpeace persuaded the fishing industry to stop catching cod and haddock in newly ice-free areas. The Arctic Ocean is really valuable, really special. It's the only ocean on the planet that hasn't been fished because it has pro been protected by ice. The ice is now melting, that is sad, but it gives us a golden opportunity to protect it, to treat it in a way that we should treat other oceans and to do it right from the beginning. But with highly valuable cod and haddock stocks moving north with warming waters, Norway's trawlermen are now challenging the moratorium they signed. Trying to demonstrate fishing in new parts of this sea can be sustainable. The Norwegian fishing industry invited us aboard the Helmer Hansen, a research ship used by the Norwegian government to study fish stocks in the high Arctic. A key focus is cod and haddock like these, the most commercially valuable fish. The scientists are getting detailed information about the size, age and breeding potential of the fish. Yeah, the length, 65, and the weight, 23,58. While the cod and haddock around the UK are still recovering from decades of overfishing, the fish up here are doing much better. So take a look at this cod, it's about 60 centimetres long, about the average size of a fish you catch in a North Sea trawl. And compare that to this whopper, which is more like the typical size you get here in the Barents Sea. It's partly due to good management of fishing, but warming oceans are helping too. So we have an impression that, that some of the fishes are actually benefiting quite well from, from the climate change. Right. They, so, what is that because their range is expanding? Range is expanding, temperature is increasing, there is a higher production, things like that. This, this is an area where, where the, the, the Atlantic uh, part of it is actually expanding and that, that's beneficial to the fisheries. The other thing they're seeing may sound counterintuitive, that the further north they go, the cold sea supports a wider array of life like this gelatinous snailfish, sea spiders, an arctic krill, essential food for seabirds and whales. So the real question is not whether the Arctic can support more fishing, it's about what damage the fishing might do. 
And on a commercial vessel like the shrimp trawler we boarded earlier with the Coast Guard, you get a sense of the impact it can have. And there's twin nets, it's a double trawl, pulling along the bottom for shrimp. And it uses this huge steel roller and a pair of otterboards to hold it down. There's nothing illegal at all about this equipment. You can see why conservationists are worried about the damage it does to the seafloor. Bottom trawling ploughs up the seabed. Some of it is pretty barren like this. But in other areas, like this one just north of where we were fishing, there are banks of cold water sponges and possibly coral. Conservationists say they're too valuable to damage. The 55-metre Hermes has just returned to port in mainland Norway from the Barents Sea. There's no doubt in your mind that there is a change in climate and the cod is moving as a result. Yeah, uh, not only the cod, but, but, the, but what the cod is eating. So the temperatures are changing. It's offloaded 300 tonnes of cod and haddock into this freezer plant. To skipper Osmund Breivik, concede catching it might be trashing the newly ice-free Arctic. You accept that trawling with, with gear on the bottom is damaging to the seabed. But you're... No, I, I'm... If, if you're trawling in like coral reefs or something like that, of course they're damaging, but we are not doing that. I don't know of any coral reef in the Svalbard area, me personally. But all of the other coral reefs in Norway are protected with guard zone, you know, you mm -hmm. cannot fish there. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, we also signed a treaty that uh, we're not going to exploit areas that have not been fished on before. Yeah. So we are taking our precautions. We don't want to exploit or do anything harm to the mm -hmm. nature. The fishermen say they'll stick to the current moratorium on trawling in previously unfished Arctic waters. But they've told us they will go further once they can show they're avoiding known biodiversity hotspots. Conservationists say voluntary agreements won't be enough. We must get it right from the beginning. And we know what we're doing. We know that we have destroyed so much of the rest of the world's oceans on the seabed with overfishing, with bad management. We must get it right in the Arctic. And that means, first and foremost, wait. Patience, don't destroy. As the ice retreats, those concerned with the Arctic's marine resources go on the offensive. Will these new oceans end up damaged and overexploited like the rest of the world's fisheries? Or can fishermen and environmentalists work together to ensure they don't? <laughs>